Welcome to the Rock is George podcast. I'm your host, George Dion, and this is episode 45. My guest for this episode is the bassist for that legendary hard rock act out of Scotland, Nazareth. Now, U.S. listeners are probably only familiar with Nazareth's two biggest hits, Love Hurts and Hair of the Dog, but the band is so much more than that. They have over 25 studio albums from their very first album in the 70s to their most recent album today. I highly recommend their 1980 to 1991 output. Fantastic albums there that just didn't get their due over here in the States. Their latest album is called Surviving the Law. It's out on Frontiers Music, and I gotta say, it's one of their best albums. Of course, Nazareth has been rejuvenated with the addition of their latest singer, Carl Sentence. I talked to Pete about how they found Carl and a whole lot more, including the new album. So here's Pete Agnew of Nazareth. If I knew absolutely nothing about Nazareth, how would you describe the band's music to me? Well, it's very, it's, you'd really have to, well, I'd have to say you'd, you'd have to go and listen to some of the albums because we don't, it's uh, very diverse. I, 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 I love, I love keep seeing us, people call the band a heavy metal band, which is, we're the furthest from a heavy metal band. We're closer to James Taylor than we are to heavy metal. You know, so I don't, I don't get that one. This is the, this new album is probably the, 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 the sort of uh, heavy rock heavy rocker that compared to a, a lot that we've put out recently. I think we did a lot of pop rock. Um, we've played uh, heavy rock, played lots of ballad kind of stuff. We've played, I mean, we've had, we had producers that, that played with the Doobie Brothers and Steely Dan, you know. We've had guys that played with Deep Purple. So you see, we've got a lot of different influences have been in our career when we've been recording with different people you know also we all write we all write all through the career of the band we write different kinds of songs we don't just uh doesn't just write hard rock songs i really couldn't i couldn't describe nazareth's music at all if you, you know that's what which i'm really happy to say i couldn't put us in a bag and that was the whole that's the whole essence of the band you know that's the whole thing that that, uh, that kept this band going for 25 albums because it kept it kept the fans interested, but it also kept us interested, you know? And uh, I wasn't playing the same stuff. You know, we didn't do part two, part three, part four, and part five, you know, of Hair of the Dog. So um, I've, I've always tried to shy away from that. I always uh, try to try and do a different kinds of different kinds of songs, you know? And, uh, and I think, we, and I know, I know that we've actually did that we've actually did that your latest album is surviving the law it came out on april 15th fantastic album i think it's one of your best in all in i think so world. yeah i agree it, it has a little bit of everything you just described from the sound of nazareth uh the first thing i wanted to know is was there an inspiration for the album's title because there's no songs called surviving the law no basically it was uh, i mean at the time I was I contacted Roger Glover and I was I, I, I complimenting him on the their album Turning to Crown. And I remember it same saying, it's a good album, it's a good title because we're just barely surviving the law these days. You know, with all the different things that were happening when we're, we're trying to we try to do some gigs here since we had this Brexit, you know, you've maybe heard about that over there since we came out of Europe yep. and the country came out of the European Union and we had the pandemic. And every place you went, there was no there was no law that stayed unchanged. You know, there was no law stayed in the same place for 24 hours. It was changed again. And you couldn't do this, you couldn't do that. There was new laws coming out that we'd never heard of before when we were going over to trying to go out to Europe, where we work all the time, by the way. We never play in the UK, so hardly ever. So uh, the amount of problems that we had to surmount uh, going out then. Plus the fact that I, I, I was reading a thing about you know the laws that come out, and it was just at that time when I was when, when we were having to put up with all this nonsense, out, trying to get out and in the country, and you know, all the foreign fillings. And it was a, a thing, a, an interesting thing I read about. Saying there's so many, there's hundreds of laws come out every year, and they come out so quickly they they, they don't get to the statute books. You know, they, they, it takes them a while for them to get written up, but you've got to obey them. They are actually in place, but they're not in the statute books yet. How's, how's that for? <laughs> how's that? Yeah. 
So I figured, and when I said that, the surviving the war, I thought, yeah, that's, that's, that's a good title, that, surviving the war. It just, it described the sort of situation, really, you know, that, that, that we were experiencing, you know. And that actually, that a lot of people are experiencing, they probably don't, don't, probably don't even realise it, actually, that, that, that they are surviving the war if they're getting along, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, I thought, it was, I thought it was a good title, actually. It certainly seems appropriate for the times that we're yeah. living in. That does, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about the uh, singles you've released so far. If you want to talk a little bit about the inspiration behind Strange Days, well, that was the see, uh, as I say, all the, all the different guys. You know, it's, it's funny. You, you, you're talking to me just now. Uh, Ten minutes ago, the UPS delivery man came to my door with twenty-five CDs, uh, no, twenty-four CDs, twenty-five cassettes and 10 uh, vinyl albums. And that's the first of me seeing these things. I've never seen the album yet. That's them just got delivered from Italy to me today. So everybody else has got a copy of the album except the band, the guys in the band. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just seeing it for the first time. Um, it looks okay. But uh, I haven't even actually managed to unwrap one yet because I was going to call you, you see. Uh, what happened was, uh, yeah, the, that one, as I, as I was saying earlier in that first question, Everybody writes, you know, we've got four guys in the band, but you've got four songwriters. And then what happened was that one day, Strange Days, that was Lee, drummer, he wrote that one. And it's, uh, again, it's a, well, Lee's a very, very good lyricist. He always has been. He's one of our be better lyricists. And he was, um, I think it's a, a comment on uh, just the, the whole song was about his, uh, a lot of different kind of people, you know, uh, people he knows, people that, um, people like Trump. People like uh, idiots, you know, other idiots. Uh, people like people that are uh, domineering, keep people, you know, that kind of thing. Uh, and uh, and people that are disappearing that he loved, you know, and people that are that don't have the uh, that don't have the the, the power uh, anymore. Uh, the, where the heroes, you know, are leaving me. So the whole thing was a, I think it was a fairly personal sort of um, statement from from uh, from Lee. It's a great song. It's it's it's, um, it's it's a great rock song. And it's one of my favorite Nazareth tracks of all time. Now you know. I'd agree with that. Fantastic lead off for the album. Uh, do you write a lot of lyrics yourself, or you just um, I'll come in with the bottom end, and we'll see where it goes from there. Yeah, no, 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 no. What happens with it? That we we all write songs uh, on the last album to tattooed on my brain. I had uh, you know everybody. I think Lee had four songs and. Carl had five or something, Jimmy had four, I had three. It just depends what, you know, when we come in with all the songs that everybody's written, see which ones fit the album and, you know, how it's going to, how the album's going to develop, you know, you you, you, you can start laying the bones down, you know, once you're in the studio. And with this, this album, with this specific album, we were all in this lockdown thing, weren't we? You know, we just started uh, back in 2020. We just finished a tour in Russia and we come back and we were locked in. And that was us, you know, they threw away the key. In fact, I said, and then we didn't manage to record it till uh, August in 2021. You know, it was a year and a half, a year and a half later. And as I've always been saying, you know, we wrote, we, we wrote the songs in jail and we recorded the album on parole, you know, so what happened? <laughs> we, we actually, um, we did that. We, we, wrote, we wrote here and everybody, I don't know where people were getting their inspiration from being locked up. I don't think so. Not all, but there was a lot of that in it. And for myself, uh, on this album, I, I, I find it kind of weird being stuck in the same place writing songs. I got a lot of my ideas when I'm traveling around, especially in the car and things like that. I always carry a recorder with me and I always got a lot of ideas. So every, when I was writing all the songs for this, my songs in this album, they're all a bit introspective because it was because of the position I was in. So when it came to putting the, the songs forward, I never really had I had a bunch of songs, but I thought, no, they're not really, they're not going to fit this kind of album, you know. So there was one though that all the guys loved, and and they really, and so did I. It was "You Made Me," and I wrote that and I sung that on the album. That's the last track on the album, and I always wanted to do a song like that. Anyway, that was that one. That's the only one that I wrote that's on the album. The other ones are uh, Lee's got five on the album, Jimmy's got five, Carol's got three, and I've got that one. Um, so that's the that's the kind of mixture you're getting this time. So everybody writes songs, everybody writes lyrics, and you know it's just uh, just the way just the way it turns out. Like I say, when we get in this case, you know, we had we had so many 
well, you can imagine after after that length of time and, and the lockdown thing, we had so many songs. It was incredible, you know. With the we, so by the time usually we wait until near enough we get to the studio and we make our choice. But there was too much this time. There was things getting sent all over, but you know, files getting sent back and forward to everybody uh, to say we're going to have to make up our mind someplace before we get in there. So before we got to the studio, we'd made we'd whittled it all down a bit. Um, uh, what happened was um, Carl, our singer, and Jimmy, our guitar player, they both made solo albums during this period as well, you know? So mm -hmm. there was a lot of stuff they wrote, you know, went on their own albums as, uh, and all this other stuff that they wrote on the Nazareth album. So a lot of material got used, but there was still a lot that didn't get used. We had about 20 songs when we got to the studio, and then we sort of, once we started, you know, laying them out, these were the, these were the 14 that seemed to go, you know, together. Um, to, to, to create what we wanted to create the atmosphere, you know, and uh, I think it worked really well. But I wouldn't want to. I wouldn't want to do this again. To, to have to get stuck in for you know, stuck in the house for two years to write songs. I don't. I don't, I don't like it. There's a song in the album called Let the Whiskey Flow. I am a whiskey aficionado myself, and you are from <laughs> Scotland, so whiskey is abundant. So I will ask, what is your whiskey or scotch of choice? Well, I don't drink now <laughs> these right, days at all. Right. No, 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 no. But, um, uh, but at the time, you know, there's uh, at the time when when I did when I did like a, a, a Scotch Glenlivet, I quite like that. Uh, I used to like a, a glass of Glenlivet from time to time. But a lot of the different, you know, there's a lot of different Scotches, and they've got so many different tangs to them. You know that. Uh, you know, you, you, I was never, I was never really just a whiskey drinker, you know, so I would just have, I fancy having one of them, you know, that kind of thing, you know, oh, you've got that one, let's try one of them, you know, so I was always more of a taster than uh, than having an actual favourite, what's yours anyway, what's your favourite? Oh, I like them all, rise and whiskies and scotches, <laughs> but... But I have to say, Oban is my favourite, uh, Oban 14 year, fantastic. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, there you go. We'll see all these places. Are, well, Scotland's a very tiny place, as you know, so all these places are within striking distance of my house. <laughs> oh, know? yeah, every village. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the thing is, the thing is uh, you know, Scotland's probably one of the... Uh, we, uh, well, most, of the, the, most, most of the stuff we make here gets sent to America, actually, <laughs> in Japan, and, uh, you know, it's a big, 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 big export, you know. Uh, you guys are releasing, well, the album's out. <laughs> you guys released the album on Frontiers Music, who just sent you a nice little goodie bag of the physical copies. How did you guys sign with Frontiers? I believe it was back in the 90s, right? No, no, no. We only did, uh, no, we, we, Frontiers, we only did, we've only done, well, that's two albums we've done with them now. We did, uh, we did Tattooed on My Brain, the last one, and this one. And, okay. Uh, and then, we, we, yeah. So it was, I mean, no, they, they approached us uh, in 20, well, let me see, it was like, we, we did, we did, the, we, did um, we did Rock and Roll Telephone in 2013, I think it was, we did that, and then it came in 2014, and, and uh, that was with uh, another one, another label, and they approached us, well, there was a, in that period there, there was a lot of different record companies that we spoke to, you know, when, uh, and out mainly all of them, and out mainly in Europe, two or three of them in Germany, and uh, and it was just Frontiers come up with the best offer, you know. So, uh, and they're, you know, they're, they've got a lot of good, a lot of good bands on the on their label, you know. So it's, uh, yeah, yeah, the, 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 we've it's been fine. We've done two, like I say, we'll do another one. You know, we've got a, we're we're contracted for another one, so uh, we'll see when that. We'll just keep uh, we'll just keep writing. There you go. Uh, Frontiers likes to put a lot of their artists together and form uh, other groups. Have you been considered for something like that? No, 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 no. We never, never. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not really that super. Um, no, we've, um, <laughs> we're, no, no, no. We've never had any of that. It's just, I think, uh, I think maybe, maybe what they do is get a lot of unemployed guys and stick them together. <laughs> give, them, <clears throat> give them another chance. Uh, no, no, we've never been involved with that. I wouldn't want to do anything like that anyway. I'm quite happy playing with I'm I'm too busy playing with Nazareth. You know, there's that much to you know, with that much to be doing with this stuff, George. You know. In 2015, Carl Sentence joined the band as the vocalist. Uh, how did you find yeah. Carl? 
it was actually a friend of mine, uh, a, a, a Scottish drummer. When we were looking for, you know, when we had to, well, we decided we were going to keep going when Dan had to, to leave, you know, because of his health. And um, we, we knew that if we were going to get another singer, we couldn't get a Dan sounder like, you know, that, that would just, I mean, people would have hated that. And well, I would have hated it as well. And I don't think, I don't think the fans would have liked that, you know, so we thought we need to get, yeah, we need to get a good singer, a really good singer, but, you know, not somebody that's trying to impersonate, you know, the other guy. So, uh, uh, I mean, we got loads of, I keep saying I get loads of tapes sent to me, but I got a lot of audition files, should I say, sent from uh, from all over the world, people that wanted to do the gig, you know, and there was a lot of them, I mean, a real <laughs> lot of them that were Dan McCafferty, you know, uh, the, you know, impersonators, if you like. And a lot of them were very good, by the way. They were, they were very good, but I said, no, this is what we're looking for. So there was a friend of mine came up and said, you should, you should have a listen to this guy. I think this is, who you're, this is who you're looking for. I had a look on YouTube and there was, um, and I saw um, Carl singing with um, Don Airy, you know, from Deep Purple. That's his, his good pal. And they do albums together and they do, they tour every year. They usually do a wee short tour in Europe, you know, Germany and that every year. So I saw stuff on YouTube, but at the time, uh, Carl was doing one of these rock and roll review, rock reviews, one of these classic rock um, um, tours, you know, with a, a big, big band, a big group, you know, two or three guitarists, and a huge amount of punters and two singers and other stuff. And what they were doing, was the you know all the massive hits you know they were covering you know and they were they were all sold out shows and they were doing things like from the, you know, the Who, the Queen, uh, Zeppelin, you, you name it, just all all the sort of monster bands you know all the monster hits and they were singing these they were they, they were doing these and they did them they did them really great of course he was singing them and after that this guy was singing them his way you know it, it was it was making a great job of these things but but the way he sings. He wasn't impersonating, you know, anybody on these other records. He just said, and I thought, that's what we're looking for, you know, from Nazareth. So we said, would you like to have a go? And he went, yes, yeah, certainly would. So we gave him like four songs to, to have a listen to. And uh, he came up to Scotland and went in for a rehearsal thing. And we played the first number, and halfway through the number, we knew, you know, this is the guy. We we're all nodding to each other, going, "Yep, this, this is it. Yep, thank you. <laughs> You're in." So that's how we found him. That's how we, we got in touch. And uh, it was funny because I'd never, I'd never sort of heard of Carol before. Although once he joined the band, I met a lot of people who had, you know, when the the that he'd been sort of around the kind of eighties. That that was his sort of time with his, with his own band, you know, and. Uh, but I, like I say, I missed all that. We were we were all too busy touring ourselves. But anyway, he's turned out to be a, a boon for the band, and he's and he's put his stamp on on the Nazareth uh, on the Nazareth sound, you know, or, or, the, or the sounds of Nazareth, you know. And Nazareth has some tour dates coming up this year. We should have just come back. I should have just come back from Russia and Ukraine last week. Oh, jeez. Uh, we were a huge tour there, as you know, as you can imagine, that got cancelled. Um, and all the other stuff earlier in the year was cancelled all due to COVID and all the stuff right up till the summer almost is cancelled, you know, because uh, the, because all the things got cancelled, you can't just throw them back in all of a sudden now that everybody's saying it's okay, you know, you, you got to have people got to have time to to do to do all the concerts. So we're actually starting now. It's going to be the beginning of June. We're at the Czech Republic, and then we're in the, uh, then we're in Germany for it's all festivals. We're holding a whole bunch of festivals up in Norway. I've got uh, four weekends. I've got 10 festivals up there. I've got festivals in Sweden. And then we've got a whole um, tour a month, a month in Canada in, in August. And then there's a big uh, tour of um, well, Germany, Austria, Sweden, and uh, uh, in Switzerland. At the end of the year, we do about five weeks uh, of a European tour. So, yeah, yeah, we're... we're we're going to be pretty busy, but you see, as I said this last year and the year before, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
And everybody thought, well, then that's why we stopped putting the dates up on our website, because I got fed up having to take them off, you know. And you know, when we went in, you know, at the beginning of the 2020, we were to cancel all the rest of that year. We thought maybe the end of that year, maybe the beginning of the next, it would be okay. So everybody took shows. Of course, we had to cancel all them. And then for the end of 21, we thought, well, we'll be okay now, but not. We had to cancel all them. And then the same happened with the beginning of 22. We just cancelled and cancelled all the time. And it got really stupid, you know. So everybody, I was just saying, how can we really play safe? Don't take any dates until July, <laughs> you know. But you, <laughs> But, you know, I'm not even going to predict, you know, that nothing else is going to come along and stop that. But hopefully not. Hopefully we should be we should be getting back to normal, well, back to close to normal. Uh, you know, what's the hard thing that, uh, that they're now is trying to make up for, you know, dates that you that you had to stop, you know, you had to cancel. And people, of course, they want to put their dates back in. And, but then you've always got the new dates that are coming in that have got nothing to do with that. And trying to put it all together and trying to get, you know, it's it's kind of hard. You know, you can't you can't be in every place at the same time. You know, it's very difficult. Everybody's finding that difficult at the moment. We did a, we've done three festivals in Britain, one festival in Switzerland, and three shows up in Denmark, and that was it. That's 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 what we've got to show for over two years now. <laughs> Just like, I've never never had this in my life. You know, it was quite funny. Because when, when we got to the end of the first year, it was the very the first year, you know, it was a year without a show. And, you know, I've never had that since I was 11 years old. Since I, since I had my first group, I've never not appeared, you know, someplace, you know, playing live to an audience. Like, since I was 11, you know, so, so it's <laughs> really, really, really weird. Next year marks the 50th anniversary of Razamanaz. It was your Nazareth's third album. It was their first one to chart. It was produced by Roger Glover of Deep Purple. Do you have any fond memories of putting that album together or the oh, events that followed? Nothing but fond memories. I mean, it was just great. It was a felt like to me. We'd, we'd made two albums before that done in Trident Studios in London. Uh, but um, And, we, well, it was... Roy Baker, who became Roy Thomas Baker, but Roy Baker was the engineer in the first one and then he produced the second one. But I never really felt as if my recording career started properly until we did Razmanaz, because that's when we went in with Roger and we used a mobile up at our rehearsal place and we used a mobile studio and everything. And it was great, the atmosphere was wonderful. It was him that suggested that. And he, and he was right, you know, to see how we would be most comfortable playing. And I just got, working with Roger was, uh, it was the first time we had a real producer, you know, somebody actually produced the record, who actually said, let's do it, that, let's do this, and, you know, let's rehearse this bit, and, let's, and work on the arrangements, and really, you know, work on the sound. And he just, he taught, so he taught all of us a lot about recording and actual, you know, the use of a studio, should I say, you know? So and that that the fact that he was a he was a, he was a great great guy to work with, and well he he must have been because we did three albums with him you know and we're still very good friends I mean now you know after all these years, uh, it was great it, it was a uh, Roger Glover happened into our lives and I'm eternally grateful for that. Does the band have anything planned to celebrate the fiftieth anniversary of the album? No, we've been, there's been so many 50th anniversaries going on lately. I've, I've lost, I'm, I'm losing count, you know. And we, just, <laughs> it was a, we had the 50th anniversary of the, the last year when we recorded, you know, we recorded, well, we recorded this one that you've got now, but we recorded it last year, you know. Yeah. And uh, it was funny because we finished the final mix on it. It was on the 12th of November. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, the 12th of November, that rings a bell. And that's when our very first album was released exactly 50 years before, in 1971. And it was uh, on the 12th of November. And on the 12th of November 2021, we finished that show saying, we, you know, we, we put the full stop at the end of the, the new one. So that was, an, uh, that was a 50 years. And uh, it was the 50 years of us uh, being in existence just a wee while ago. So there's now the 50. Uh, you know, I never thought about the 50 years of Razzmatazz, now that you mentioned it. but. Uh, you know, this is keep you know keep the ideas coming, George. You know we need be excuses to to do things like that. You know, to, <laughs> you know you need an excuse for another party, so that will be a good one. We can have the the Razamanaz fiftieth anniversary party. Yeah, that sounds like fun. <laughs> we'll suggest that on our Facebook.
Uh, one of the things I found interesting is that uh, music is pretty much a family affair for the Agnew family. You got your son, Lee, on drums, and your other sons, Stevie and Chris, also play music. Uh, you must be a proud dad. Yeah, they're brilliant. In fact, at the moment, they're all playing in the one, because we've been off, uh, with Nazareth, they're all playing in the one band for the moment. They're doing, a, they set up a unit called, they're calling it After the Last Waltz. And it's uh, they do the whole show, you know the the, the you know the last waltz show with the band, um, and so they, they've they've done a couple of gigs. It was great. I've been to it, and uh, I've been to one of their shows, and it was really really good. So he's playing drums with Stevie and Chris, uh, and a couple of the, his other mates. It was there's always been you know in my house. I mean I've got a youngest son as well. He's a good piano player and a great singer. So there there you know when we have a party, we're never stuck for a band. You know we've got. A, <laughs> <laughs> we're, 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 we're plenty of guys around. Well, that's all I got for you today, Pete. The new album is Surviving the Law. It's out now on Frontiers Music. Probably one of your best albums, I would say. I think so. I think it's uh, it's up there. It's up there with the with the very best. I mean, there's uh, and 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 it's it's nice to know, you know, when, that you're not just you're not just uh, hanging about and just doing another yet another album to prove that you're still breathing you know it's nice to be actually creating something that's that's fresh and it does and it is fresh these last two albums with this lineup have been uh you know they've been a breath of fresh air they definitely filled the band and 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 and, th and and our fans agree you know this is great you know because the the reviews we've got for both of them and this bit well i don't need to worry about the last one because it's had its reviews this one is getting tremendous reviews i'm you know i'm so so happy about that and so proud of it i mean they're getting uh, you know really really i can i can find it hard to express the words and um, that's uh you, you've always got to you know there's a lot of bands are still around after after the uh, 50 years there are quite a few but not still creating you know new music or, 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 or anything any different from what they were doing before you know so it's it's nice to be able to to be around and still be creative for your fans and done for yourself obviously but for your fans and to you know let them know that they're not just uh, you know it's not like they, we just need to buy the record out of loyalty they're actually buying this thing because they love it so that's great really really great excellent you got a lot to be proud of and i wish you nothing but the best of luck and thank you for coming on the podcast today it was my pleasure george and it was and thanks very much for having me on so uh, you take it easy and let, maybe if i get up uh, plumb out the way you could get <laughs> I'll, bring, I'll bring a bottle of whiskey with me just uh just just in case you show up all right that's right bring a bottle of whiskey we'll meet at plymouth rock that's <laughs> okay, Josh. Thanks very much. Cheers. Once again, I want to thank Pete Agnew of Nazareth for taking the time to appear on the Rock is George podcast. Be sure to check out their latest album, Surviving the Law, out on Frontiers Music. If you like what you hear, go out and buy a physical copy. Make sure that you're supporting the artist. I also want to thank Dustin Hardman of Hardman Promotions and Frontiers Music for making this interview possible. And I want to thank KNAC.com for their partnership in this podcast. You've been great. I've been George Dion, and I'll see you again soon.